Have a look, Tan. You take as long as you need. You've got no lifelines. But you might as well play it, whatever. You can't lose this. It's worth £64,000. Question number 11. Have a look. Which of these people would perform a Veronica? Ballerina. Bullfighter. Figure skater. Singer. Now, you take as long as you need. You've got no lifelines, but it's worth £64,000. You've got nothing at all to lose. You've got £32,000. Which of these people would perform a Veronica, ballerina, bullfighter, figure skater or singer for £64,000? I don't know. <laughs> I think I would... What are you thinking? It would be a possible toss-up between a figure skater and a bullfighter. They're very different. Quite. They're very different, aren't <laughs> they? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for figure skater. It's your call. I know. It could be any of them, couldn't it? Which of these people would perform a Veronica? It's worth 64,000. Veronica. I'm going to stick with figure skater. Final answer. I think so, yeah. I don't know. It's a guess. Final answer? Yes. Tanya, you came in here with £32,000 tonight. You've still got £32,000. Oh! I so wanted you to get £64,000. The answer's bullfighter. That's my other choice. You had to go for it, you had to yeah. guess, and it was one of your two. You said bullfighter yeah. or figure skater. Hey, not bad, though. You go home with £32,000. Give her a big hand. Well done, Tanya. <laughs> in the correct order in the fastest time is next to play for a possible one million pounds. No calling out, please, in the audience. They need to concentrate. Fastest finger first. Here comes the question. Starting with the lowest in value, put these numerical terms in order. Starting with the smallest up to the one worth the most. Numerical terms, four of them. Here they come. Three score and ten. Grand. Ton. Baker's dozen. Looks of absolute shock and horror on the faces of the entire audience. But let's, have, let's see how our ten contestants did. Baker's dozen, 13, that's the lowest. Then going up, three score and ten is 70. Uh, then a ton is 100 and a grand, of course, is 1,000. Quite straightforward, actually. Let's see how many got it right. Then let's see who got it right in the fastest time. Who's got it right? Who was fastest? Dave Bailey in 7.73. <laughs> A... Surprise day, Dave! Yeah. Gobsmacked. Just a bit. You're not normally this quiet. Come on, then, you want to play for a million quid? Yes, yes. Yes, please. That'd be nice. Just a very good. Yeah. For 100 quid, what's the small lift used to carry food and crockery in a restaurant? Dizzy server. Dumb waiter, dopey assistant, daft steward. Uh, dumb waiter. It's the right answer. You've got hundred pounds, David. Yes. <laughs> You'd really like to go now, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever done that. I'm dying for somebody to do that one night. Have a look at question number two. You've got all three lifelines. Which ring traditionally has a blue and a red corner? Bull ring, boxing ring, smoke ring. Wedding ring. Boxing ring. Sure it's not a wedding ring? Not yet. <laughs> you look terrified. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. It's good, you got 200 quid. <laughs> okay, question number three. 300 pounds, here it comes. On a ship, what's the opposite side to starboard? Port. Sherry. Vermouth. Rum. 
support. Mr Rodas, you've got 300 pounds. <laughs> Have a look at question number four, it's worth 500 quid. Which professional removes plaque as part of his or her job? Dentist, interior decorator, plumber, picture restorer. Uh, dentist. It's right, you've got 500 pounds. <laughs> you're not this nervous when you're driving a lorry, Dave. Oh, no, I'm worse. <laughs> Figures you probably are. <laughs> have a look at question number five. It's worth a thousand pounds. Big sigh of relief you get there, you go home with at least one thousand. Here it comes. What were the first names of the comedians Morecambe and Wise? Vic and Bob, Eric and Ernie, Sid and Eddie, Tommy and Bobby. Eric and Ernie. It's good, you got a thousand pounds. Well done, Dave. <laughs> Guaranteed. can't see Anne, can you? She's looking ever so keen. She <laughs> sees the money ticking away towards question number nine. Question number six. You might as well play this, Dave, no matter what. You've got all three lifelines left. No problem so far at all. It's worth £2,000. What's the number of the Trans Pennine motorway connecting Manchester with Leeds? Now, you may or may not have driven along it. Six. Fifty-six. Sixty-two. Seventy-four. Take your time, have a look. The number of the Trans Pennine motorway connecting Manchester with Leeds. Six, 56, 62, 74. It's worth 2,000 pounds. I'm torn. Take your time. I'll go 50-50. Okay. Computer, take away two wrong answers, please. Leave Dave the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. What's that done? Yes. Is it good? OK, I'll go for 62. Not six? No. Final answer? Final answer. It's good. You just won £2,000. <laughs> and 62 goes right across the top. Right, you've got £2,000. Phone a friend and ask the audience. Two lifelines left. Have a look at question number seven. It's worth four grand. Here it comes. Which international alliance was the Eastern European counterpart of NATO during the Cold War? Nordic Council, Warsaw Pact, Council of Europe, Arab League. Got an inkling? Yeah. I'll go for B, Warsaw Pact. Where did that come from? Eastern Europe. Not Arab League. I think not. Want to play? You've got two lifelines, up to you. No, I'll stick with it. I'll go with Warsaw Pact. Final answer. Yeah, final answer. How are you feeling now? <sighs> you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you just want £4,000. <laughs> I don't know how you're feeling, Dave, but Anne's getting in a bit of a lather up there. You've got <laughs> £4,000, you've still got two lifelines. You are two questions away from £16,000. You can't go back on it. Me and my big man. <laughs> yep. OK, have a look. Question number eight is worth £8,000. That's about half of 16. Getting there. Yeah. Have a look. Question number eight, here it comes. King Edward VIII took which title after his abdication? Duke of Balmoral, Duke of Buckingham, Duke of Sandringham, Duke of Windsor. It's worth £8,000. You've got 4000 guaranteed. You have got two lifelines. I think it's Duke of Windsor. I'll go for the Duke of Windsor. Why? I've just heard that before. Something to do with his wife. When he was a king. It's just something that's 
It's there in the back of your mind, thinking the Duke of Windsor. Final answer. Yes, final answer. You've just won £8,000. <laughs> oh, Dave! You've got £8,000. Have a look at question number nine. It's worth £16,000. Here it comes. Which of these dishes is named after a Napoleonic battle? Chicken Marengo, Lobster Thermidor, Beef Stroganoff, Peach Melba. No pressure, Dave, but your whole life hangs in the balance. <laughs> That's all right, then. Take your time, have a look. You've got 8,000. Which of these dishes is named after a Napoleonic battle? Chicken Marengo, Lobster Thermidor, Beef Stroganoff, Peach Melba. You can phone a friend, you can ask the audience. Oh, it's the audience, Chris, please. <laughs> oh! OK, audience. <laughs> It's worth £16,000, which is rather a serious sum of money. It is a serious sum of money any night. It's particularly serious tonight. This is the question. It's worth £16,000. Which of these dishes is named after a Napoleonic battle? A, B, C or D? All in your keypads, please. All vote now. Not very conclusive. 33% are saying Marengo, 18 lobster thermidor, 35% beef stroganoff, 14% peach melba. <sighs> it's probably the last thing you wanted at this moment, isn't it? Yeah. It's worth 16,000, but you would lose seven if you gave me the wrong answer. You've still got to phone a friend. I'm going to have to use phone a friend. OK. Uh, who would know? I'll oh, phone Kay. Kay? OK. Do you want me to tell her how much money's involved? Yes, you can do. Do you want me to tell her what else is involved? No. <laughs> Take your time on this one. Definitely. OK. Kay, where's Kay? Kay's in Leicester. OK. Hello? Kay? Yes? Hiya, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hello. Hello. Um, I've got Dave here, Dave Bailey. Right. Uh, he's doing fine. He's on £8,000. Yes. OK, with your help, we can get him up to £16,000. I'll try. Please do. The next voice you hear will be Dave's. He'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of those is worth £16,000. Right, OK. OK, good luck. Dave, your time starts now. OK. Yes, Which hello. of these dishes is named after a Napoleonic battle? Chicken Marengo, Thermal Lobster... Lobster Thermidor, sorry. Beef Stroganoff, or Peach Melba? I'm almost sure it's Chicken Marengo. How sure? Um, 90%. OK, OK, thank you very much. OK. Cheers. Right, bye. Good luck. She doesn't know how much luck, does she? 33% of the audience said Marengo. 18% said Lobster Thermidor. 35% said Beef Stroganoff. 14% said Peach Melba. You've got £8,000. You'd lose seven if you gave me a wrong answer, but it's worth £16,000. <laughs> Kay's pretty good. I'm about to find out how good. You don't have to play this. You lose 7000 if you're wrong. Sorry, it's only water. <laughs> it's worth £16,000. Chicken Marengo. Take your time. As long as you need. There's no hurry. Enjoying it so far. Oh, fine up until now. You've got no lifelines left. You've asked the audience. Uh, you found your friend. If you 
Give me a right answer, you double your money for 16,000. Chicken Marengo. On a plate. Keep on doing this to me, don't you? Final answer. See, now I'm tempted to take them on it. £7,000. Chicken, I reckon. Final answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to say take your time, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> it's only an hour show, mate. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. Final answer. Hey. It's only money. You going to play? Yeah, I'm going to play. You're saying to me, Chicky Moringa. Just hope that 33% of this audience were right. You had £8,000. 35% of this audience were wrong. You've just won £16,000! Oh. Oh, Fantastic! Oh, man! Watch my lips. Chiki Marengo was the right answer. <laughs> You've just won £16,000. Now, Dave. Oh. <laughs> oh, I want to go on. No. <laughs> you remember at the top of the show, Dave? OK. Seems a very, very long time ago now, Dave, to all of us. All these nerves, I've just lost my memory. No. <laughs> Dave, let me refresh your memory. You said if you won £16,000 which you just have. At the moment, <laughs> I could lose 15,000 in the next question. I wouldn't risk that, David. <laughs> Not if you want to find your tyres still pumped up in the morning. Yeah. You said if you got 16,000 pounds, you would ask Anne to marry you. Not on national television, though. <laughs> what do you think, Anne? No. <laughs> <laughs> You begin yeah. to see a lot of the sort of man he is, really, aren't you, Anne? <laughs> see, I'm a coward, really. £15,000 now. <laughs> right, well, all right, OK. Of course, of course I'm not going to force you, but you have got £16,000. <laughs> have a look at question number 10, Dave. Whatever happens tonight, you've been a top sport, but I really, really don't want you to lose this money. More important, <laughs> Anne really doesn't want you to lose <laughs> this money. Question number 10 is worth £32,000. Serious wage. But you don't have to play it. You've got no lifelines left. If you give me a wrong answer on this one, you lose 15,000 of the 16 you've got at this moment. How are you feeling now? <coughs> I could pay for the honeymoon now as well. Yeah. That's Dave, trust me, that's only the start, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at question number 10. It's worth £32,000. Who was the founder of the London Philharmonic Orchestra? Henry Wood, Thomas Beecham, Malcolm Sargent, Charles Halley, Henry Wood, Thomas Beecham, Malcolm Sargent, Charles Halley. It's worth £32,000. Well, I'm not 100% sure, and I'm not going to gamble that sort of money. I think it's Thomas Beecham, but it's just... I guess. Really. You weren't going to say Chicky Marengo. Well... £15,000 is a lot of money to gamble on, I guess. Thomas Beecham sort of sticks out, but... <sighs> I'm only 50% sure on that. You can take the money and walk away. You can play, but you lose 15,000 if you're wrong. It's worth 32. Minimum amount you walk away with, but if you're wrong, you drop 15,000. I'm going 
take the money, Chris. Thank you. Final answer. Yeah, that's my final answer. Give a big hand. Dave Bailey. You've been amazing. Dave Bailey goes away £16,000 better off. I can tell you, Dave, if you had said to me, Thomas Beecham, I would at this moment be giving you a cheque for £32,000. It was the right answer. Listen, you've been a top sport. He goes away with a brand new bride. Come on down. Come on, Ant. Come on. Your man's coming home with £16,000. Give him a big hand. What up, both of you? Oh, yeah. Go on the proper one. Cheers. What up? I'm not sure I can take much more of this tonight. Dave Bailey goes back eventually to Langdon in Essex with Anne and £16,000. Watch this space in the press. Nine contestants left, fastest finger first. Put the four answers in the correct order in the fastest time. You're next tonight to play for £1 million. No calling out, please, in the audience. I don't think the audience has got any breath left. Let them concentrate. Here comes the question. Starting with the lowest, put these poker hands in order by value. Starting with the lowest up to the highest, four poker hands. Here they are. Pair, Royal Flush, Flush, Full House. <laughs> we find out the serious gamblers. Right, lowest first then. Uh, right order then, starting with the lowest. Pair first and foremost. Then going up to a flush. Then it's Full House. Then it's Royal Flush. That's the right order. See how many got that right? Then let's find out who was fastest. All these got it right. Only one. Oh, Alan Ward was the only <laughs> one correct in 9.5 seconds. Oh. Alan, you card sharping person. <laughs> That's a sign of a misspent youth. Oh. You're the I only one with the right answer. I don't play cards. <laughs> well, you played you play something very well. You want to play for a million quid? I would love to. I would love to. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Have a look. Question number one is worth £100. 15 away from a million, you've got all three lifelines. Here we go. According to the traditional tale, what causes Sleeping Beauty to wake up? Phone call. Prince's kiss. Alarm clock. Noisy neighbours. I'd love to go for noisy neighbours, but I'll mm. go for a prince's kiss. <laughs> it's right, <laughs> you've got £100, Alan. Well done. <laughs> OK, question number two for £200. Here it comes. Traditionally, what's the name for the first person to cross the threshold on New Year's Day? First person. First footer. First clogger. First slipper. First booter. Not a clue. Can I ask the audience, please? Right, audience. That's why lifelines are there. If you get stuck, that's why they're there. On your keypads, please, audience. Traditionally, what's the name for the first person to cross the threshold on New Year's Day? A, B, C or D? All vote now. Just <laughs> 92% of this audience for £200 are going for A, first footer. 3% think it's first clogger. <laughs> Some Dutch in the audience. <laughs> Nobody says first slipper. Five percent think <laughs> traditionally the name for the first person to cross the threshold on New Year's Day is first booter. <laughs> it's entirely your choice, Alan, but 92% is quite high. I'll go for first foot, Dana. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You got two hundred pounds. Hello, I've never, I've never ever heard of it. No worry, that's what lifelines are for to get you through. Alan, you're fine, you've got £200. He's still got 50 50, he can still phone a friend. Alan, have a look at question number three, it's worth £300. Here it comes, you're 13 away from 1 million. Good luck. Which sign of the zodiac is represented by a lion? Like this one? Yep, I love this one. <laughs> okay, wait and see. Leo, Virgo, Scorpio, Libra, 
to go for Leo. Sure. Positive. It's the right answer. You got three in the pound. <laughs> Question number four is worth £500. Here it comes. Which of these is an English folk song first popular in Tudor times? Blue shoes, white garters, green sleeves, red breeches. <laughs> go for green sleeves. Straight answer, you got £500. <laughs> Big sigh of relief. Let's get you up to question number five. Then you would go home with at least £1,000. Back to Port Talbot. Have a look. Who stands off stage and reminds actors of forgotten lines during a theatrical performance? Prompter, jogger, reminder, refresher. Prompter. It's right answer, you've got a thousand pounds. Well done, Alan. <laughs> you are delighted to be there, are you? No pressure, you're fine. Traditionally, the prompter always stands at the left of the actor in the UK and the right of the actor in the um, USA. Take your time, Alan, have a look at question number six of a possible 15. In geometry, which line divides a circle into two equal halves? Radius, diameter, circumference, tangent. Can I go 50-50, please? OK, can you take away two wrong answers? Leave Alan the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Radius and diameter. I think it's B. Diameter? You might as well play it, you're guaranteed a thousand. I'll go for B. Final answer. Final answer. Diameter. Happy? Not really, but I'll go for it. You're a great worry to me, Alan. It's right, you've got 2,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all ready for my shot, eh? Oh! You've still got to phone a friend. Number seven is worth £4,000. Take yeah. a look at it, you're nine away from a million. You don't have to play this, you can phone a friend and still take the money. Okay, have a look. Where is Noah's Ark said to have rested after the flood? Everest, Ararat, Kilimanjaro, Snowden. Mount Ararat. Final answer? Final answer. Alan, it's good, you got £4,000. <laughs> you still got phone a friend. Alan, you're really putting yourself through the mixer. That's the way I am. You got £4,000. Have a look at question number eight of a possible 15. Which geographical feature is a narrow strip of land linking two larger areas of land? June. Firth, Isthmus, Gulf. It's worth £8,000 to you. Could I phone a friend, please? You can. Who would you phone? Robin. Robin Thomas. You don't have to take his answer, Alan. It's entirely up to you. You've got £4,000. Tell him the question, four possible answers. It's worth £8,000. Hello? Robin? Yes? It's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. What? Chris Tarrant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I don't believe you. It's true. <laughs> well, all right, try this then. Uh, Alan Wadlow's here with me. Yeah, I know Alan. That's right, well, he's sitting here now. He's on £4,000 at the moment. Yeah. With okay. your help, we can get him up to £8,000. Do my best. OK. The next voice you hear will be Alan's. He'll tell you a question and four possible answers. One of those is the right answer, the other three are wrong. One's right, it's worth £8,000. OK. OK, good luck, Robin. Alan, your time starts now. Robin. Hi, Alan. Which geographical feature is a narrow strip of land linking two larger areas of land? Dune, Firth, Isthmus or Gulf? It'll be a guess, Alan. I, I, I'm not sure. It'll have to be a guess. What is it? It would be Isthmus. <sighs> Robin's normally good. I'll go for it. Please. 
final answer. Final answer. He said he's normally good. He is normally good. You just won eight thousand oh. pounds. <laughs> Uh, it's like Panama, linking North and oh. South America. Yeah. <laughs> right, you've got 8,000 pounds. Question number nine is worth 16,000 pounds. You don't have to play this question, Alan. Have a look at it, tell me what you want to do. In Britain, which of these Royal Air Force ranks is the highest? Air Marshal, Air Chief Marshal, Marshal of the RAF, Air Commodore. What are you thinking, Alan? I'm thinking Air Commodore, I am. But... No, I won't risk it. It's, it's too much for me now. <sighs> I've struggled all this way, <laughs> I'm going to keep that 8,000. Good shot. Positive. <sighs> yes. Definitely. You can't wait to get out of the studio, can you? I can't, no, no. <laughs> Final answer? Final answer. Final answer, you're going to take the money, you're going to take 8,000 pounds. Take the money and run. OK, give a big hand. Alan goes away. I think a very relieved man with 8,000 pounds. <laughs> you were playing your luck all night. If you had yeah. been that little bit braver and said to me, Air Commodore, you wouldn't be sitting there at this moment with 8,000 pounds. <sighs> You would have just lost £7,000. It was the wrong answer. The right answer is Marshal of the RAF. Did you do the right thing? Oh. Give me a big hand. Alan did the right thing. He goes away. £8,000 better off, better for Bill, but what I know. Have a great night. Good night. So, Alan Wadlow takes £8,000 back to Port Talbot in South Wales. Now, we've still got eight fine players left. Fastest finger first. Audience, nice and quiet, please. Here comes the next question. Starting with the earliest, put these cities in the order they hosted the Olympic Games. Atlanta, Barcelona, Tokyo, Moscow. OK, let's check out the right order, first and foremost, then. Starting with the earliest, uh, Tokyo, farthest back, back in 1964. Moscow, then in 1980. Then it was Barcelona in 92. Most recent, Atlanta, 1996. That's the right order. Now, let's see how many got it right. Then let's find out who got it right in the fastest time. All these got it right. Elaine Briggs was fastest in 8.50 seconds. Elaine! Tell me, well done, you know your Olympics. Yeah. Are you a sporty girl? No. No, not at all. <laughs> Want to play for a million pounds? <laughs> Dead handy, wouldn't it? OK, let's do it. <laughs> OK, Elaine, question number one for £100, 15 between you and a million quid. Here it is. What is changed regularly at Buckingham Palace, creating one of London's tourist attractions? The servants, <laughs> the guards, the sheets, <laughs> the nappies. The guards. The guards, the right answer. What are you got? <laughs> okay, have a look. Question number two is worth £200. Here it is. Which animal's name is rhyming slang for talk? Rabbit, dog. Beaver, squirrel. Rabbit. Rabbit. So right now, so you've got 200 pounds. <laughs> rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. It actually comes from um, rabbit and pork talk. Yes, you probably don't do a lot of that in Fordham Bridge. Rabbit and pork <laughs> talk. Right, you've got 200 pounds. Have a look at question number three. It's worth 300 quid. No problem so far. You've got three lifelines. Here it is. Which of these is traditionally eaten with roast beef? Yorkshire pudding. Chocolate pudding. Sticky toffee pudding. Plum pudding. Yorkshire pudding. It's the right answer, no problem. Three hundred pounds. <laughs> you right so far? Yeah. Okay, it's good. You're enjoying it. Question number four is worth five hundred pounds. Here it comes. Which word is a warning shout in golf? How's that? Time, four, or oh yay? Four. Four's the right answer. You got five hundred quid. <laughs> 
Uh, one more question between you and going home with a guaranteed £1,000. Always a big uh, sigh of relief when you get to this. I'm sure you will. You've got three lifelines. Have a look at it. Question number five. It's worth a guaranteed minimum tonight of £1,000. Here it comes. Which girl's name is also the name of a citrus fruit? Geraldine. Christine. Clementine. Justine. Clementine. Sure. Yeah. Very confident? Yes. It's good. You've got £1,000. <laughs> £1,000, all three lifelines, no problems at all so far. Question number six is worth £2,000. Here it comes. London Smithfield Market is best known for selling what? Meat, fruit and veg, used cars, fish. London Smithfield Market is best known for selling what? Meat, fruit and vegetables, used cars or fish. It's worth £2,000. You've got £1,000, you have got all three lifelines. It's meat. Confident? Yes. Ever been there? No. Like to get there? No. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. It's good. No problem. You got two thousand pounds. <laughs>